So tell me about the comprehensive metabolic profile. This is a great foundational test and a great test to monitor how you're doing once someone's in maintenance. Here's how it works. It was developed by Dr. David Brady in conjunction with Dr. Andy Brawley, who is the founder of Metametrics. And what we were looking for is a test that would help us get someone started and look at all the different areas that can affect energy production, that can influence overall health, that when you do a regular blood test, you don't see. So that patient coming into the office who feels tired, who says, oh, my doctor's run all these different tests and everything is normal okay. within limits, this is the test for them. For the someone coming in who has had difficulty losing weight, but everything looks normal and they're eating right and exercising, this is the test for So what is it them. looking for specifically? It looks at a variety of different areas. It's a very simple test. This is one great thing. Blood work, urine? All is it? it is is blood spot and urine, fasting. Okay. okay, so very simple to do. You do it at home, you send it in, you get it back 10 days later, and you have all of these different results and really p pretty graphs to show you all these different areas. The first thing that we look at are something called organic acids. Did you ever take chemistry? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, well this, you know, our body is a chemistry lab, and this test is really like our chemistry lab in action. Because as we go through all these metabolic processes, we dump these organic acids into our urine. And this tells us a lot because it tells us where we're having problems making different things. Okay, are we missing a cofactor? Are we missing a vitamin? So that when we're going down the line to create something like a brain chemical of serotonin, is there a point in the pathway where we're missing something and we can't do it? That means that we're going to have a high organic acid in the urine. So example is one of the blood tests they do very frequently is something called methylmalonic acid. And if you see that, you know that someone has a B12 deficiency. Well, we get an organic acid of that as well. So with those organic acids, we can see a variety of things. We can see B vitamin deficiencies. What happens if someone's got some mild B vitamin deficiencies? Yeah. They're going to feel tired. They're going to have trouble creating different brain chemicals that can affect their mood, that can affect their sleep, that can affect their energy production. We can look at neurodeficiencies. We can look at your body's ability to create energy. There's a pathway called the Krebs cycle. As an exercise physiologist, this is something we had to know backwards and forwards, and it's really how your body creates energy. It can tell you anywhere along that circle if there's a problem. It can tell us if your body's detoxifying well and if you are having to detoxify more so that we'll know that the, you're being confronted by pesticides or some different types of toxins. Two other areas that those organic acids, and again this is just one part of the test, can look at lipid peroxides. That means are we under a lot of oxidative stress which makes us age more quickly. Okay. And then intestinal microbial barriers, so what's going on in our gut? Do we have leaky gut? Do we have some bacterial overgrowth? Things that are going to make us have gas and bloating, etc. So what we can do when we look at all of those things is with some simple nutrient changes, we can help someone feel better very quickly. So the test basically looks for deficiencies. Looks nutrient for deficiencies. deficiencies. Now that's one part of the test. Those okay. were the organic acids that looked at those areas. We also look at fatty acids and we do that through the blood spot. And this is really important because we know that we used to have a much different ratio in our fatty acids. Right now we have something somewhere between an 11 and 20 ratio of arachidonic acid, which is a very pro-inflammatory acid, to EPA, which is an anti-inflammatory fatty acid. Back in the Paleolithic times, that ratio was more about 3 to 1. And it turns out those Okinawans that we always hear about, the, the people that live in Okinawa and how healthy they right. are, they coincidentally have that three to one ratio. And it really comes from eating fish, eating raw nuts and seeds, eating some of the healthier fats, rather than eating a lot of franken fats, trans fats, and saturated fats that make up the majority of our sad standard American diet. Okay. So this is critical to test because if you've got some coming in who's in pain, who's got a lot of inflammation through their body, if you don't fix this area, you're never going to be able to combat that. And if you just throw a bunch of drugs at them to try to reduce their pain, you end up damaging their gut, which leads us to the next part of the test, and that's food allergies. Okay. This test does a 30 spot on the most common food allergies, and you'll find a couple interesting things. There'll be some people that will have every single one of those 30 they'll respond to, 
which means that you've got a damaged gut. Your gut wall now has become permeable and things that are passing out into circulation that shouldn't be and your body's firing up. So your intestine immune has a hole in it. It's got little holes all through it. Okay. Now that's one thing, but you'll also notice maybe just a couple select different food allergies. And we spoke earlier that these hidden food allergies, because again, you don't eat the piece of bread and instantly get hives. Okay. You may eat the piece of bread and feel spacey for the next couple days. You may eat the piece of bread and your joints ache, but it's not so obvious that you go, wow, that bread made my knee hurt. Okay. And, and that almost seems hard to fathom. But then as we so pull 50 these... 50 different foods? 30 different, 30 different foods, the okay. most common ones, the ones that when Metametrics looked at their general food food allergy test, they said these are the ones that always come up. Like what? Wheat? Gluten? Glu well, the most obvious ones all the time are gluten, soy, corn, dairy, nuts, berries, citrus. These are the eggs. Those are the ones that happen to come up all the time. But especially gluten and casein, because those are the ones when you... Gluten, ca casein, casein soy... In? Casein's in dairy products. Okay. Gluten, casein, soy, corn, you show me a packaged product that doesn't have those things in it. They all do. So when you try to avoid those, it can, can be very difficult, but what a major effect it can have on your health. So what do you do? You put them on an elimination diet? So Once yes, we actually get an elimination diet printed out that we give to them. We'll go about cleaning up their gut. We're going to remove those offending causes, heal their gut back up because it may be... The intestine. That, right. Once their intestines are healed, it may be that they can go back and rotate these foods in. But again, no matter what, you should never be eating the same thing every single day. Okay. That's just not a healthy choice. So really, what does this, this program do? Because I'm looking again at how does my body create energy? What basic deficiencies do I have? Do I have an imbalance in fatty acids making me pro-inflammatory? Or if not, do I have increased oxidation? Am, is, am I putting more stress on my body? Can my body detoxify things well? Do I have these hidden food sensitivities, sensitivities damaging me? What this test does is allows me to pinpoint those areas of concern, take the guesswork out of it. Because again, most of us sit down, we go through a health history, and right. then we do our best educated guess. Why do we go to school for so long? I mean, now I've been in graduate school, what, 15 years? So we can make a better educated guess. So how much easier has this made your life as a nutritionist? When, when as a nutritionist, like this made me want to go back into practice full time, I swear, because really? I went, wow, the results you can get. Because, again, when you can replace those core nutrient deficiencies, and we get pretty close when we do our guessing, but you know, you're not going to hit it right on because you don't have all the information. Okay. So all you're doing is being the best detective. When you can take a health history, the information from total metabolism testing and this and put it all together, you can get people healthier so much faster. You can find out which areas of metabolic damage are their big issues and hit those. But the best thing of all, the compliance is so huge because when I can lay out in these pretty graphs I have a little exactly more leverage what's on going on, I have leverage, leverage on the client because a lot of times they'll go, I know I should take B vitamins, but I <laughs> right. hate swallowing pills. Okay, you hear this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I know for myself, I'd been in a major car accident and I was taking two B Supremes a day. I figured that's, I, t I bumped up my B vitamins, I should be fine. Well, I was also having to take some, some medications I've never taken in my life that deplete B vitamins. B vitamins are one of the easiest vitamins to deplete. Okay. They get depleted by stress and they get depleted by almost every drug that you take. So I was so tired and I thought, well, this accident, I mean, it was a very bad accident. But I went and ran this, I was still deficient in B vitamins. I just brought those up a little bit more and what a change. Change everything. Change everything. But how would I have known that? There's no way to have known that. So again, we take the guesswork out and we bring the compliance in. And compliance is everything. I could design the best program for someone, but if they don't follow it, they're not getting better, are they? So how often should somebody retest? It really depends where they're at when they start. Let's say the average person, we're going to test them and we'll find a bunch of areas that we need to work on and we'll put them on a program. I'd like to retest them in six months. Then we're going to get them into more of a maintenance program. The most important part of all of this is the maintenance program. I find that a lot of people like the process of getting healthier and then they don't go into a maintenance program and they start this downhill slide until they mm -hmm. have to come back and start all over again. You get there and then you reward yourself. Yeah. I know I do. With, with ice food. cream. Right. right. Okay. So that's why we have to put them then into a maintenance program. 
a health assurance program, if you will. So what we do is we do the initial test, we put them on their program. The test spells out exactly what they need to be taking. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is all taking science. There's as no in guesswork. Exactly. And what foods to stay away from? Well, we are going to and what foods to, to stay away from, and then we put that together with all of our lifestyle recommendations. And of course, hopefully, we're coaching them through the process. Six months later, we'll retest. We'll see what we need to adjust and tweak. Probably, they won't need to be taking all the things they've been taking because they've healed. Mm -hmm. And then every year, we test them again. We have them on their ongoing programs. We have it shipped to them every month through our concierge supplement service. Okay. And every year we retest them. And everything should be fine, but it allows us to catch if something early, if something's starting to go sideways on us. Mm -hmm. Because by the time it shows up in some of these labs that you take through a uh, typical doctor visit, you're already way past where you need to be. This is going to let us catch it early so that you're never going to end up into this profound disease state.